Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing something that's been very, very requested lately, especially over on my Instagram. People have been asking me for an updated perfume collection. So I don't like to do updated perfume collections too often because I feel like they're redundant and I feel like they get boring and how many times in one year can you share a perfume collection? Um, but lucky for me, I love perfume and a lot of my viewers also love perfume. And my perfume collection has changed a lot over the last six months to a year. Um, as I've told you guys in previous videos, I'm definitely moving more into the niche direction. I've been enjoying a little bit more complexity with my perfumes. I've kind of moved a little bit away from designer scents because I'm kind of, to be frank, very disappointed with a lot of designer scents. A lot of the new releases haven't been wowing me. I'm also not impressed with the markup in prices. I think that it's ridiculous to pay $200 for a very simple designer perfume um, and a lot of the times they keep on reformulating or watering them down and still charging atrocious amounts so it just kind of makes sense to look more in the niche direction these days anyway if you ask me um, so I do have a few new perfumes in today's video and stay tuned until the very end because I'm going to share with you my up until this point gate kept perfume layering combination that has been one of my biggest compliment getters and just absolutely incredible. They smell so good together. So I'm going to share that with you at the very end of the video. Um, and also I want to say in advance, I do have a really bad cold. Of course, the day that I wanted to film, I woke up with just a horrible cold. So I sound really congested. I hope that my voice isn't annoying in today's video. Without too much further ado, you guys, let's get started. If you're new here, I would love if you would consider subscribing. On this channel, I do share a lot of minimalism, organization, decluttering. I do a little bit of fashion, skincare, self-care. Um, I talk about my favorite sunscreens. I review perfumes. Um, I do a lot of like closet tours and closet organization, capsule wardrobe kind of stuff. It's just my vibe. So yeah, if you like coffee, if you like any of those things, I would love if you would consider joining my family. And without too much further ado, let's get started in today's updated perfume collection. So the first fragrance I have to share with you guys is actually just a decant, and this is a decant of Acro Awake. So I'm showing you this because this is sitting on my perfume shelf with all my perfumes because I've been thinking about possibly getting a bottle of this. I'm not 100% sold on it yet. Actually, a friend sent this to me a few months ago, and when I first smelled it, I wasn't too sure. I thought it was a little bit too realistic, too foody, and I didn't think I would enjoy it. However, it seems like the more I come back and smell this, the more I'm enjoying it. And when I have worn it, I've gotten compliments on it. And I've also really enjoyed the subtle whiff I was getting of this, like the sillage that I was getting from it. And it is quite pleasant. It's a really nice one for fall, winter, a little bit more of those cooler months. This is a coffee fragrance. Um, and it's not a sweet coffee, like a black opium. It's not... Um, too overly like frappuccino sugary sweet it's actually a little bit more warm and spicy and soft so this has notes of coffee cardamom italian lemon and haitian vetiver the most notable notes the ones that you pick up the most are coffee and cardamom and this one yeah i have a cold so my nose is a little blunted i'm not picking up things as strong today as i usually do i can still smell them but they're not as strong but this is just a beautiful, like spicy, a little bit sweet, but not too sweet coffee fragrance. You definitely get cardamom, which I love cardamom. If you guys have smelled um, Starlight from Zerzhov, this kind of reminds me a little bit of Starlight. Imagine Starlight from Zerzhov, but take away some of those kind of warm bakery spices, like take away your coriander, pumpkin pie spice leaning spices, and just replace it with just pure cardamom and then add some coffee. So it's kind of like Starlight, less spicy, more coffee. And it does have this beautiful warmth to it. It is a coffee fragrance, but for me, it's not like too, too much coffee. When I first smelled it, I thought it was, I thought it was too foodish. As you guys know, if you've been watching my channel, I don't like to smell straight up like a food. I don't like to smell too gourmand. Um, I like a little bit of gourmand, but not too gourmand. And so, yeah, this is really nice. And compliments that I've gotten when I've worn this is that I just smelled really nice and vanillic. And somebody actually told me once I smelled like cashmere when I was wearing this. So the perception of this fragrance is not overly like, oh my gosh, you smell like food or whatever. It's definitely more of a warm, like cozy, fluffy cashmere type of a coffee and I do really like it. I haven't bit the bullet and purchased it just because I didn't really feel like spending the money on a perfume lately. I've kind of been focusing a little bit more on skincare and makeup but this one is really nice. It's pretty I would say like pretty elegant and fairly upscale and just like 
really goes with my aesthetic. It goes with my wardrobe. It's perfect for like wool, cashmere, like that kind of fall vibe. Um, it's really beautiful. So, and it's kind of addictive. It's like that scent that I keep coming back to. I keep smelling it. So that's why I've kept the decant. Um, and I can imagine that I will probably end up with a bottle of this, although it's not really the best time of year to be purchasing this type of fragrance. All right, let's do an oldie but a goodie, something that's a little bit familiar. This is Mon Guerlain from Guerlain. I have heard that this has been reformulated, which makes me really, really sad if that's the case. I do have a backup bottle of this and I have, I've smelled it and it smells normal. And I got that bottle quite a while ago. Like I would say maybe even a year ago. So I don't know if the new ones sitting out on the shelf have been reformulated or not, but that would be a real shame if they have been, because this is one of the most beautiful scents I've ever smelled of all time. It's one of my favorite feminine fragrances. This one is a beautiful, soft, cozy, lavender, vanilla fragrance. There's also tonka bean in here. There's some floral notes. There's even, I think, a little bit of bergamot in the opening, something just to give it a little bit of a freshness. Um, there's sandalwood. There's also a little bit of licorice in here, so there is a little bit of a spiciness to it. It's very feminine. It's very pretty. It's very soft, easy to wear, kind of everyday appropriate, signature scent worthy. Just smells elegant and pretty and mature kind of, and it's just beautiful. Um, I can't tell you guys how many compliments I've gotten on this perfume. Like the number of times I have been approached by people at work saying you smell so nice. And even people saying, what are you wearing? Do you mind if you tell me what perfume that is? I want to get it for my wife. I've actually had that happen. Yeah. It's just really pretty. It's really soft. It's really feminine. It's just beautiful. There's not much else to say about it than that. So that's Mon Guerlain. This is the biggest dent, I think, out of any bottles I have currently because I no longer have Kaoli Vanilla 28. If you guys saw um, a previous video, I did a declutter and I had, or maybe it was an empties video and I had just a little bit left of the Kaoli Vanilla and I'm honestly kind of tired of it. I think I just wore that perfume not to go off on too much of a tangent, but I think I just wore Kaoli Vanilla too much and I'm just kind of like tired of it. I just needed a break. I needed to smell some other vanillas. I needed to go in a different direction for a while. I may very well one day come back to Kaoli Vanilla, but right now I'm still kind of over it. So, But this one remains a favorite in my collection. I've had it for a really long time, one of the oldest bottles in my collection. So that is Mon Guerlain. All right, the next bottle is one I haven't shared with you yet on this channel, I don't believe. This is Santal 33 from Le Labo. So this is a perfume that I've told you guys before I really did not think was for me. I didn't think it was my scent profile. I was in that camp of people who, when I smelled this, I smelled that sandalwood dill pickle thing. A lot of people, when they smell sandalwood, all they get is straight up pickles. And I kind of got that a little bit. I've never gotten it to, a, to an extreme like I think some people do, but I definitely could see why people said that they picked up a little bit of a pickly thing. And you guys know, if you watch my channel, that I had Santel Don Shaw from Armani Privé it's a beautiful fragrance still to this day I think one of the most stunning feminine elegant like sophisticated smelling perfumes I've ever smelled it's gorgeous it's also about half the price of Santel 33 and it has a similar feel but they are different perfumes um Santel Donchat also has really good lasting power and it has more of a brightness to it and more of a uh, freshness to it compared to this one. So the reason I don't have Santal 33 anymore is because, or sorry, the reason I don't have Santal Donsha is because I got this one and I didn't need two sandalwood perfumes in my collection. Um, they're just too similar for me to have both because they are dominant in the sandalwood. So this one I did finally bite the bullet and ordered a bottle. I'll talk to you guys about what I like about it more in a second. Um, but the notes that are in here are sandalwood, leather, papyrus, Virginia cedar, violet, cardamom, iris, and amber. So there is a bit of a leatheriness to this. There's a bit of a greenness. There is a bit of a powderiness to it. There's a warmth in it. Um, it's pretty. The violet gives it a little bit of this brightness. So it's not just like straight up a woody fragrance. And I know that this, I used to think, was more masculine and would smell better on a man, but this is such a beautiful, sophisticated fragrance. And I've told people, because I've tried this numerous, numerous times, like I've sprayed it in the Lalabo Boutique multiple times. I have sprayed it on paper. I've had samples, but I kind of wrote it off very quickly as too masculine, too strong in the sandalwood, didn't like the leather, didn't think it was for me, thought it was too woody, and I just really did not think this was my kind of scent. But you guys, 
The wearing experience of this, of this perfume, is so much different than the spraying it on paper or trying it in a boutique. This is, again, like so many other fragrances. It's one of those perfumes you really have to wear to understand like why people love it so much. Because once I get this on my skin, at least for me, it kind of takes on this different feel. It turns into more of a bright, almost like super clean feeling fragrance, which is different from what I get when I spray it on paper or when I've smelled it in a boutique. Gosh, my nose sucks today. I can hardly smell anything. But yeah, putting this on skin, it is gorgeous. It has this beautiful ethereal brightness to it. Um, it's not too masculine. It's not too woody. The leather doesn't bother me. It smells very unisex. I love how this smells on my boyfriend. He actually also has a bottle of this of his own and he wears it. Usually when I wear a fragrance that he also has, it reminds me too much of him and it makes me feel like I'm wearing a man's cologne and it makes me feel like I've kind of hijacked his collection. This one doesn't make me feel that way. This one, when I wear it on me, it smells different on me than it does on him, which is the first time that's ever happened with a perfume that he and I have shared. This one, when I wear it, it smells feminine, and when he wears it, it smells masculine. So it really is kind of a chameleon. It's kind of a Jack or Jill of all trades, and I feel like anybody can wear it, and it's just so beautiful and so worth it. The lasting power is amazing. You just smell sophisticated, effortless, chic, just a gorgeous fragrance. So I have definitely switched camps and I am now on board with Santal 33. So, okay, I'm hoping I don't lose my voice, you guys, because I'm starting to sound pretty hoarse. <laughs> um, but this is Black Opium La Parfum, my favorite black opium that has ever come out. This one smells very similar to the other black opiums. I probably don't have to say too much about this because I feel like you've probably already smelt it at this point if you don't already own it. Um, but it does have that very very reminiscent pear, coffee, jasmine accord, but the difference with this one is it just has a lot more vanilla than the other black opiums, and this one also has solar notes. So for me, it makes it smell a little bit more like summertime appropriate. It's a little bit brighter. It's a little bit more airy. Um, it's, in my opinion, it smells a little bit more sophisticated as well. And the vanilla, the, the fact that there's so much vanilla in here just makes it such an easy reach and a little bit more everyday appropriate. It's not something that I think you have to wear just at night. I've gotten a lot of people asking me, is this a perfume you can wear all day? I think you definitely can. And this is a very easy reach for me if I just don't know what to wear. If I wanna smell good, if I wanna smell sweet, and I just really don't know what to put on, it is still a very easy reach for me. So that's all I'm gonna really say about this one. Um, sometimes I find it is a little bit too sweet but I still really like it. So that is Black Opium Le Parfum. All right, this one I'm just gonna get out of the way because it's kind of like, I don't know, I, it's my guilty pleasure perfume, I guess. If I have one perfume that I'm kind of almost embarrassed <laughs> to have, it's this one. And I shouldn't really be embarrassed, but this is Gold Couture from Juicy Couture. Um, and this is still a favorite perfume of mine for certain occasions with my partner, like date night, um, like cuddly times, Netflix and chill kind of times. That's This is a perfume I grab for. This is the most flirty, um, feminine, fun, simple, likable perfume that men just seem to like. Men really seem to like the um, Viva La Juicy perfumes. They're just, they're just kind of sexy. They're fun, they're flirty, they're sexy. And also I will say in the Viva La Juicy defense, if you've ever smelled Zerjoff Gran Balo, that's a pricier perfume. It's a niche perfume. A lot of people really like it. Grombalo smells a lot like the Viva La Juicy's. It's very similar. Also, uh, Gucci Gorgeous Gardenia, I believe it's Gorgeous Gardenia, the one in the pink bottle, smells very similar to Viva La Juicy. So that is a scent profile that people just like. It's a likable scent. Um, I've actually considered going back and trying Gorgeous Gardenia again and potentially trading this one out for that one just because I feel like that one has a little bit of an elevated edge compared to the Viva La Juicy's. And this isn't like super age appropriate for me. I don't feel I'm in my 30s. I feel like this is a very young smelling perfume, but I can't deny it, you guys. I still really like it. And I've actually tried to declutter this already. I did declutter it. I gave it to my mom and she actually liked it. And then I went back to her house one day. I saw it on her dresser. I picked it up and I smelled it and I just like really missed it. And I said to her, I said, do you wear this? Do you like this? And she said, well, not really. I don't really wear it. And I said, if you don't want it, can I have it back? And she gave it back to me. <laughs> so yeah, this is caramel. This is jasmine. This is berries. It's sweet. It's feminine. It's flirty. It's fun. 
it's just a great, simple, flirty fun perfume for flirty fun nights. That's what it's for. I don't take it very seriously. I wouldn't wear it for like daytime. I wouldn't wear it when I wanted to feel really polished. It's not that kind of perfume, but I have to say I do have a soft spot and it is kind of my guilty pleasure fragrance that I still have. So all right, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about one of the more expensive perfumes in my collection. This is also one of the newest perfumes in my collection, and this is Zerzhov Acento Overdose. I've had this perfume now for about, I want to say, two months, and it is a perfume that I feel like I don't wear, I don't want to wear it every single day, but also the weather has been really wonky lately. It's been like an extended winter. We had like two weeks where it felt like it was spring, maybe even summer, and then we had more winter, and now we're kind of getting back into spring, but I feel like this is a very summertime perfume, so I haven't worn this a whole lot, but I have worn it a couple times, and I also had a sample of this before I purchased it, so I can tell you guys kind of my formed opinion on it. So this was not a blind purchase, very, very pretty bottle. So the notes that you have in a Cento Overdose are fruity notes, green accord, aldehydes, Egyptian jasmine, lily of the valley, Bulgarian rose, eucalyptus, and pine. One thing I will say about the Zerzhov fragrances is that it's almost impossible, I find, to, and this kind of rings true for a lot of the niche fragrances, it's almost impossible to look at the notes and try to conjure up in your mind what this must smell like because they, they smell so unique and so interesting and they're so well blended and they're so beautiful and expertly crafted that the scent is just like nothing you would imagine from smelling or from reading the notes. So what I get from this is a clean, kind of fresh, aldehydic, almost a little bit sharp, fruity jasmine fragrance with a little bit of a greenness to it and a little bit of a slightly vanillic, ambery warmth. So my nose sucks today, but I'm going to smell it anyway and see. It's pretty potent, luckily. Ugh, my nose is just not even doing it justice today. This perfume is a little bit fresh. It's a little bit clean. The jasmine that's in here is a very feminine, um, almost an ambery vanillic jasmine. It's not too heady. It doesn't give me a headache. I don't really get much of Lily of the Valley. It does have a little bit of a greenness to it. There's a subtle like, like depth to it and this warmth running through it. It's like this ambery kind of green depth. So it's kind of fresh. It's kind of fruity. Um, very feminine, very floral. I think that this could be unisex, but I honestly see this more on a woman than on a man. I feel like, I don't know if I'd want to smell this on my boyfriend. I like how this smells on me. Yeah. And it's very, very strong, very potent. A little bit goes a long way. Again, it's one of those perfumes that had I smelt this at a counter, I don't think I would have been impressed by. Even spraying it on a paper at the counter, I don't think I would have been particularly sold on it. This is one that I had to actually put on my skin and I had to experience it, wear it, let it waft up around me, go outside, go outside in cold weather, go outside in warmer weather, and then I understood why everyone seems to love this. So it is not a safe blind buy, definitely not safe. I always encourage people to get samples, even though I don't always follow this advice, because sometimes when perfumes are super hyped up, you get them and you already have this underlying notion of what you expect it to be. And you expect it to be a certain, like at a certain bar. And if it doesn't reach that, you are just disappointed. And that's going to be 90% of perfumes you blind purchase because it's just, it's just too difficult to possibly imagine what does a perfume smell like just by the notes. It's just too hard. So just to look at the notes, I never in a million years would have thought this would be my type of perfume. But it is definitely one of the most unique, beautiful, expensive smelling perfumes I have. This is the one I want to wear in the summertime when I want to feel super luxurious and feel rich and feel like I'm putting off those like super fancy vibes. It's just a very fancy smelling perfume. I recently had the opportunity to also smell Herba Pura and Herba Gold. And I will say that I like this better than both of those, like for me, and all of them are very potent. Zerzhov uh, perfumes, especially the fruitier fragrances are very potent. And for me, this is the one that just kind of does it for me. Um, Herba Pura still is a little too strong, a little kind of headachey for me. This one is also powerful. You have to go light handed with it. It can be overpowering and overwhelming. Yeah, definitely one of the more expensive perfumes I have, one of the more expensive smelling and makes me feel really, really posh and I quite like it. So, all right, the next fragrance is one that I have had my eye on for quite a long time. I also 
had smelled this in the past, but it was quite a long time ago and I didn't really remember what it smelled like. So this was kind of like a semi blind buy. Wasn't a hundred percent blind buy. I had smelled it. Um, I just couldn't remember exactly what it smelled like. I just knew that my tastes have been changing. I've been going more in that, um, complex niche direction. So I just had a feeling that this might be uh, a winner for me. And I knew that if it didn't work out, I would have a really easy time finding it a new home because it's a very popular perfume. So this is Atelier des Ors Lune Feline. This is just the original EDP. They do have an extract. I have a sample of the extract and I can tell you that they're not different enough to have both. The extract version is just more vanilla. Um, yeah, it's a little bit stronger and more vanilla, but essentially they smell very, very similar. Maybe one day I'll do a compare and contrast if you guys are interested. So the first thing about this perfume is the beautiful bottle. You will see that it has these gorgeous gold flecks. And I believe those are like real, like 14 karat gold flecks in the bottle. So it's a stunning presentation. The back of the bottle looks like some kind of a beautiful sunrise, like a beautiful golden sunrise. Presentation's amazing, the bottle is beautiful. All right, so this one is a cardamom vanilla resinous fragrance. A lot of people describe it as smoky. I don't really get smoky at all. Um, to me, Maison Margiela by the fireplace, that one smells smokier to me than this one. I don't get smoky. What I do understand when people say is this does have a bit of a medicinal quality in the opening particularly. So when I first sprayed this, I definitely got a little bit of that medicinal quality. It almost smells a little bit like a cough syrup, not in a bad way, but it just has that kind of, that kind of like, um, resinous, woody, medicinal, like camphorous, menthol-y kind of scent just in the opening. After it dries down, it becomes this beautiful, sweet, elevated, golden smelling vanilla. Um, it does have some cardamom in it. It is spicy. It is warm. It is cozy, but it also has this brightness about it. The vanilla is very like, um, shiny. <laughs> it's like, for lack of a better way to describe it, it smells like a golden bright vanilla. It just dries down to be this beautiful, pretty scent. I will be honest. I'm kind of sometimes on the fence because that opening does bother me just a little bit. The opening is a little bit medicinal. I think there might be incense or something in here as well. It kind of has like a similar feeling as when you first spray Rosendo number no. five or baby cat from YSL, both of those had incense in them and they kind of came off smelling a little bit like rubber tires, like burnt rubber, rubber tire kind of thing. So this doesn't smell like that, but it kind of gives off the same feeling where when you first spray it, you're kind of like, Ooh, what is that that I'm smelling? It's a little bit, some people would say smoky some people would say medicinal. So it kind of does have that. Um, but the beauty for this one is definitely in the dry down. It has this very pretty, unique vanilla in it. Actually, I noticed when I was smelling my perfumes the other day, the one that this smells the closest to is uh, Luby Rouge from Christian Louboutin. Luby Rouge is more of a powdery cardamom vanilla. That's it. It's just a powder cardamom vanilla. It's soft. It's warm. It doesn't have anything challenging about it. It doesn't have anything medicinal. It doesn't have any incense. It doesn't have resins. It is, it's a straightforward, very simple powdery cardamom vanilla. This one has a little bit more complexity to it. It definitely does have a little bit more of a resinous, woody, medicinal quality to it that not everybody will love. So they don't smell the same, but they do have similar nuances. I can definitely smell the vanilla and the cardamom in this fragrance. So that's Lune Feline. I still have the box of this one. I haven't totally decided if this is going to stay because I'm at a point with my collection where I have to love the fragrance like from beginning to end. I, I have to be absolutely head over heels in love with it for it to stay. And if there's something too similar and I'm not going to reach for it, then I may not keep. So I haven't been really decluttering perfumes because I don't have that many perfumes right now. And I also love all my perfumes that I have for the most part. So I don't really feel the need to do any declutters, but if I did let any of them go at the moment, this would actually be it just because the opening sometimes does bother me a little bit. And I, I just don't have room for that in my life. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about a vanilla perfume that I have 
really fallen in love with. Like this one, I really, really love. And you know, that's the difference for me when I hold up something like Lunafilene versus this one. And I ask myself how I feel about it. This one is just like such a no brainer. And that really tells you right there what's worth keeping. But anyways, this is Maison Francis Kirk Dijon Gentle Fluidity Gold. This is a perfume I have had to try again, as with a lot of perfumes, I've had to try it many, many times before something finally clicked and I really realized I loved it. So this is a very popular MFK fragrance. It's also very popular um, vanilla perfume. It's popular fragrance in general and for good reason. So this is a juniper berry, juniper um, centric fragrance. It is truly such a unique vanilla, one of the most unique vanillas I've ever smelled. What gives it that uniqueness is the, I think there's juniper or juniper berry in here, or maybe both. So when it kind of turned for me, when it clicked for me, was actually the last time I was in Las Vegas. I was just randomly testing perfumes, and this is one I've always wanted to come back to and revisit, because I always hear people talk about how much they love it. I put it on my arm, I wore it for an afternoon, and by the end of that afternoon, I kind of was sold on it. It just smells very, very expensive. It's my, what I call it my fancy vanilla. It's kind of the fancy vanilla in my collection. It's the one that I wear when I want to feel the most special, the most um, fancy, yeah, like glamorous, date night, special occasion. It's a special occasion vanilla. I think you could wear it for any time you wanted, but for me, it definitely makes me feel very fancy. And I have worn it quite a bit. There's not much of a dent considering how much I've worn it there. It doesn't look like, but I have worn this on at least, and I do save this for date nights. So I've worn this on at least three date nights. It's very strong, very potent. A little bit goes a long way. Um, compliment getter. I, not that I'm around like tons of people, but I get lots of compliments from people in my circle. My boyfriend has even complimented me. And that is a special thing because he doesn't often go out of his way to tell me he likes a perfume unless he really, really likes it. So it's just a really elegant, fancy, pretty vanilla. Um, definitely very unique. It just literally smells like gold. So the name gentle fluidity gold is perfect because it literally smells like money it smells like gold it smells rich it's it's just beautiful there's not much else to say other than that all right another perfume that's going to be really familiar to you guys if you watch my channel because i've raved about this a lot especially over the last year this is killian i don't need a prince by my side to be a princess or just princess i love this perfume this is kind of like my perfect fragrance in a sense. It's feminine, it's warm, it has a little bit of a complexity to it. It's not overly simple. It's like mass pleasing, but it's not too simple. So this is a vanilla uh, marshmallow green tea fragrance. Yeah, vanilla marshmallow and green tea. I also think there's a little bit of orange blossom in here, I want to say. There is a little bit of a white floral component to it. So this is like fluffy, it's warm, it's inviting, it's cozy, but it also has a floral brightness to it. I really like when perfumes have a mixture of warmth, woodiness, spice, and vanilla, marshmallow, a little bit of gourmand, but I love when they also add some floral components because it just makes it less foodie and more feminine and perfumey. I love that mixture. So like I say, this is kind of like my perfect feminine scent. I think this could be a signature scent. You can wear this all year round. It's floral enough and clean enough and bright enough that you could wear it during literally the spring or summer, but it's also cozy enough and warm enough and vanilla enough that you could also wear it during the fall. It's pretty enough and signature scent enough that you can wear it to work, but it's also sexy enough you could wear it for a date. It's just super, super versatile. Also a massive compliment getter, super mass pleasing. Um, I think it's a very safe blind purchase. Also the price is not too expensive. Lately with inflation and with the markup of perfume prices, this is no longer like that crazy exorbitant compared to a lot of other perfumes. And I just love it. It's just like, it's that perfume that just never fails. I can wear it all the time. It layers really well with other perfumes. I have a couple of perfumes coming up that I think are great layering fragrances that I'm going to share with you, but I really think you can't go wrong. So it's just like, it's pretty, it's feminine, it's floral, it's soft, it's cozy, but it's also bright and clean and vanilla and all the things. It's just beautiful. So, and it has that unique green tea like spin on it, which I love. So that is Killian, I don't need a prince by my side to be a princess. 
This is Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. I love this fragrance. I still love this fragrance. I think I will always love this fragrance. This was a blind buy about two, maybe three years ago now, and it was a love at first sniff. It was an instant absolute like 10 out of 10 fell in love and it remains to be one of my favorite perfumes to this day so this is a vanilla cardamom iris perfume it does make me feel very expensive and very posh and very luxurious um, but at the same time it's something you can wear all the time you could wear this any time of year i think it's not too heavy that you couldn't wear it in the summer sexy enough for a date night um, signature scent worthy, definitely something I could see myself reaching for every single day without any concern at all. Lately, I've been kind of getting over those powdery scents. This one is a little bit powdery, but it's not too powdery. It's really nicely blended. So the iris makes it a little bit lipsticky, a little bit makeup-y. You've got your vanilla, and then you've got this kind of woody, warm, not too overpowering cardamom. The, the way the cardamom comes across in this perfume, I think I've told you guys before, is... It smells kind of to me like a vintage building. It smells to me like I'm in a vintage building, you know, where the wood has that really old antique scent to it. That's kind of what I get. And this perfume, I believe, was inspired by um, burlesque in Paris. So it definitely does give the vibes of high heels, lipstick, uh, sexiness, just like oozing with this red, vibrant, like flapper girl kind of femininity. But at the same time, it's not childish or uh, too in your face. It doesn't give sexy the way Jean-Paul Gaultier gives sexy, if you know what I mean. It gives sexy in the way that Maison Francis Kirjan gives sexy. It's it's a sophisticated, uh, upscale, pretty fragrance. The one gripe I would say, it doesn't have the greatest performance. Like It lasts okay, but it doesn't have a big scent bubble. For the price, I wish it had a bigger scent bubble. I feel like I have to overspray it. The good thing is it comes in a large bottle. This is, I think, a 90 ml bottle. It was expensive, but you guys, it's lasting me so long. And you can see I've put a pretty good dent because I take it with me whenever I travel. This is kind of my vacation go-to. It gives me the same feeling as Vinnie Fatale from Tom Ford. If you've ever smelled that one, by the way, that's a perfume I'm considering getting. I just really, really like it. I think they reformulated it. I smelled it in Sephora and I love it, but I didn't feel like spending that kind of money. The feeling that I get from this is the same feeling I get from Vini Fatale. They don't smell the same. They're different perfumes. They have, they have some things in common, but it's just that feeling. It's that like bold, beautiful vanilla nighttime sexiness. All right, this is my third last perfume in my collection, and then I'm going to share with you guys my two perfumes that I like to layer together that when I layer them together make me smell and feel amazing. Um, so this is Diptyque Eau de Well, the Eau de Parfum specifically. I have had the Eau de Toilette a couple times already actually, and it just never ended up sticking around. There was something about it that although I liked it, it just... I don't know, sometimes it bothered me or I just wasn't head over heels for it. This is the Eau de Parfum version. The bottles, I would say, are not as pretty. I like the look of the EDTs better than the EDPs personally, but they all have this beautiful um, like artwork on them and they're just so simple and so luxurious looking. Even the back sticker has a pretty art on it. And Diptyque is just one of those houses that I just adore. They have so many beautiful fragrances. This is one that I have tried a couple times in store. It does something for me that the Eau de Toilette doesn't do. So this one is very similar to the EDT. If you guys haven't smelled um, the Eau de Well fragrances, they're basically like um, a green sort of foresty, piney vanilla, a little bit resinous, um, subtle spices. The EDT is a little bit fresher, a little bit less spicy, and a little bit less dominant on the vanilla. In the EDT, you get a little bit more complexity, which is kind of nice, and you get this beautiful greenness, and it's a little bit more bright. Um, this one focuses a little bit more on the spice, a little bit more on the vanilla, but it smells essentially the same as the EDT. It's just it's like heavier and richer and a little bit deeper, and less of the bright, fresh greenness. The EDT of this is kind of like a beautiful forest after it's had a rain, like a fresh, clean rain on a summer's day. It's a little bit bright. It's a little bit dewy. Um, it's very clean smelling. It's very airy. It's vanilla. It's pine. It's resinous. It's just stunning. It smells like an enchanted forest, really. This one, the EDP, is kind of like that, but not after it's rained. Like It's more like um, a heavier, cool nighttime maybe version. 
And so this still does give me that like a fairy tale forest feeling. It really smells like um, a beautiful vanilla fairy tale forest is the best way I can put it. I'm probably a little bit biased because of the beautiful photo on the front. Just reminds me of like a fairy tale. I don't know why I always think princesses when I see it. Very, very pretty. Um, this is a really sophisticated vanilla as well. Um, I think it's fairly mass pleasing. I've been reaching for this one a lot, actually. There is a little bit of a dent in the bottle. I was reaching for this a lot in the winter. Very classy. It's just that scent that every time I would smell it on skin, um, the EDP, I just would think, wow, this is so pretty, and I wanted a bottle, and I thought about it for a long, long time before I finally got it, because I know that the EDT didn't stick around very long, and I didn't want it to be a repeat, but this one has really done it for me, so I really can't say enough good things about it. Yeah, it's just a gorgeous green fairy tale forest vanilla where Maison Francis Kirk de Jean Gentle Fluidity Gold is like your fancy nighttime glamours. This is more like your everyday casual vanilla kind of. Second last perfume. I haven't lost my voice. We're doing pretty good. So this is Giardini di Toscana's Bianco Latte. Now I did do a video, a first impression video, um, talking about this perfume and I in that video I said that I didn't know if I was going to keep it I think I had actually already sold it and the reason being was I picked up a little bit too much powderiness and a little bit too much coconut in this perfume even though there is no coconut listed um, so this is a caramel vanilla fragrance it also has a honey I want to say honey and tonka bean and maybe some musk so first of all I'll tell you what it smells like and then I'll tell you kind of my overall thoughts on it. So this is a very sweet, very, very sweet, very potent, powerful vanilla caramel perfume. There is also tonka bean in there, which if you guys haven't smelled, or coumarin rather, coumarin and tonka bean are kind of um, from the same, the same pod, if you want to call it that. They smell very similar, and they have this kind of powderiness to them. I have a hard time with coumarin and tonka bean. I don't like that sort of almondy powderiness. It just rubs my nose the wrong way. I've tried a lot of really popular um, tonka bean perfumes and they just are not for me. And so I get that a little bit in here and that was kind of bothering me. I also pick up a little bit of coconut in here even though it's not listed. But overall, and I was hoping I, was hoping I could find a vanilla perfume that was basically like this, but without that powderiness, without that coconutty feeling that I was getting. And unfortunately, I cannot find another vanilla that gives me what this gives me or does it better. Like this one in this scent category, I think is the best in its category. This is the best in its, in its class of a sweet caramel vanilla. I have not smelled a better one. Now that powderiness and that coconutty vibe still can be a little much for me. It depends. I have to go pretty light with this. Um, it's a very strong scent. A little bit goes a long way. You really do not need very much. This has amazing sillage. It lasts forever. I tried a couple of other really hyped up perfumes. Like I tried Escapade Gourmand. That was a flop for me. It was just too musky. Not my cup of tea. It was too like creme brulee musky. Um, I also tried Accident Eleven E. Again, it was kind of too foody. Uh, just not my cup of tea. This one just kept on like in the back of my head, I was like, shoot, I should have kept it, should have given it a second chance. And what really did it for me was layering it with the perfume I'm about to tell you about. So I will say, first of all, I love these bottles. The bottles are so pretty. However, this is my second bottle of this. And you can see that the paint is worn away on the edges. Also the um, label was kind of torn a little bit. And the lid actually has a couple more imperfections, which isn't a big deal, but it's got a couple of like imperfections in, in the cap. And so I was a little disappointed because this was obviously rubbing around and also the sticker was scuffed. I had to kind of wash it a bit. So it was a little disappointing because this one was obviously like bumping around in the box for quite a long time, either in shipping or whatever. But I just think when you pay for these niche perfumes, it would be nice if they would make sure the presentation was perfect so i'm not really impressed that the paint has rubbed off on the corners from rubbing inside the box that's the one thing i will say about it otherwise the bottles are beautiful my first bottle that i got from the same store was in immaculate condition it was perfect it was so gorgeous kind of sad that i didn't keep that one so this perfume you guys i just 
it has like an addictive quality. So I, I still hold true to my review. It still smells like what I think it smells like, but it has an addictive quality that keeps me, um, wanting to come back for more. So initially I didn't think this was, this one was going to work, but actually I just like, I've never smelled anything quite like it. It's really beautiful. Um, so Bianca Latte, I believe stands for white, white milk, I want to say. And this is not super lactonic. It's a little bit milky, a little bit lactonic, but it doesn't make me feel nauseated. I've tried a lot of lactonic perfumes that just make me feel kind of sick to my stomach. It's addictive. It does smell a little bit gourmand, but it's not gourmand to the point that I feel like I don't want to wear it, but it is quite gourmand. Um, but it has a brightness to it. Uh, it's just, it's just gorgeous. Also, I think because there's honey in here, I think that really sweetens it up. So it's just a beautiful fragrance. Um, I do have to go light handed with it. It still does sometimes, um, bug me if I get too much of that powderiness, if I start to smell that, but it really depends on what you're trying to smell. If I smell it and I think about vanilla and caramel, I get that. If I smell it and I think about powdered almonds or coconut, I can also get that too. So it totally is like your perception. But you guys, what really changed my mind about this perfume is I tried a layering combination. I tried layering this with none other than Baccarat Rouge 540. And that was what, that was a game changer for me. Okay, you guys, so... Back at Rouge 540. I'm a little bit embarrassed to say it, but yes, I have it back in my collection. I have tried this perfume so many times. I have owned this perfume at least twice over the last four or five years. I have had multiple samples. I have tried it at the store numerous times. I've also owned the Extrait version, which I kind of want again. I just don't want to spend the money on it. <laughs> um, but I did decide to try Back at Rouge again. And what I like about Back at Rouge it's kind of, it's kind of like a chameleon for me. It literally can be layered with everything else in your collection, like pretty much everything else. And it changes the way the perfume is perceived. It adds this like brightness and this etherealness and this vibrancy and this like warm, sweet cotton candy, but expensive smelling resinous vibe to whatever I spray it with. I can wear Baccarat Rouge 540 with Santal 33, completely changes the vibe. I can wear it with Eau Duel, it totally changes the vibe. Yeah, you could wear Baccarat Rouge with Killian Princess. Like, Baccarat Rouge is kind of, yeah, it is kind of a chameleon. It just goes really well with anything that you spray it with, and it just kind of adds to the sillage and adds to the magic of whatever you wear it with. So I'm sure you've heard of BR540. I'm not even going to talk about what it smells like. Resinous. Um, to me, it's resinous and airy and vibrant. It's like a sweet kind of burnt sugar, but yeah, it's kind of like a sweet burnt sugar. Um, a little bit simple. Some people don't like it. Some people really do not like BR540. I have come to like it a lot. And you guys, I mean, check out the dent. There is a dent in this bottle. Never in a million years would I think that I would put a dent in BR540 because it was that perfume that, um, I don't want to drop these. It was that perfume that I owned and I just never reached for it. There was something about it. I was like, some days I like it. Some days I don't like it. I don't really know what to think about it. I keep coming back to it. So finally, I just did bring it back. This was like a few months ago already. I brought it back. And you guys, just one day, I don't know what possessed me. I don't know where it came from. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try layering Bianca Latte and Baccarat Rouge 540. These two together, you guys. OMG. I'm like at a loss for words of how to describe them. So first of all, they have similarities. Baccarat Rouge has that sweetness to it. It kind of picks up a little bit on the caramel that's in Bianca Latte. They just work really, really well together. Bianca Latte already has this airy, cloud-like feeling about it. It has this like bright white, um, you know, fluffy, like cloudiness to it. It's sweet. It's vibrant. It's got that caramel. It has a little bit of this burnt caramel sugar feeling to it. So it just pairs really, really well with BR540. And BR540 doesn't have any powderiness. It doesn't have any heaviness. They complement each other so, so well. When I layer these two together, you guys, the Baccarat Rouge kind of it kind of dulls down that powderiness. It kind of tames the like powdery tonka bean quality that I get in Bianca Latte. And it adds this like ethereal brightness. It just makes it smell 
amazing. I wore this combination a few times. I've worn it a few times. Such a compliment getter. People will literally stop you and say, excuse me, you smell amazing. What are you wearing? You smell so good. What are you wearing? I've had compliments from people when I've gotten my nails done. Like I don't go a lot of places with, um, I don't work in a public place where I can wear perfume because at my job, we're not really supposed to wear perfume. So I haven't worn this to work. That would just be too much in the healthcare setting. Um, but yeah, people in my circle are like, you smell so good. Yeah, if you have not tried layering these two, if you have both of these perfumes and you have not layered them, I would suggest wearing them. And the ratio that I would put them in is I would spray all over, not like in the same spot on your skin, but I would spray probably two or three sprays, sprays of Bianca Latte. You don't need a lot, it's pretty potent. Two or three sprays of Bianca Latte all over, and maybe about like four or five of Baccarat Rouge 540. I think that's a good ratio. You need a little bit more Baccarat Rouge and a little bit less Bianca Latte, and that combination is just like chef's kiss, wow, amazing. Uh, you smell like an angel, you smell bright, you smell um, like fluffy and light and pretty and sweet and vanilla-y and feminine and just, it just, it's a, it's a winning combination. Like if I ever come up with my own perfume, you guys, if I ever come up with my own line of fragrance, I will be putting basically what you see here, these notes together in a bottle and I will call it I can't call it angel because that's already been done. I don't know what I would call it. it. It smells like a diamond. It smells like a beautiful, vibrant, caramel diamond. It has a bright sweetness to it. It's just so pretty. So if you have these two and you haven't layered them, do yourself a favor and do it. I almost wanted to gatekeep this because um, it's just so special. Like I almost didn't want to tell anyone what this combination is because I don't want everyone I know to smell like this. It's unique. And that's truly what I love about, um, layering perfumes is you can smell unique when you do that. Another great combination is, uh, Baccarat Rouge and Santal 33. I think that is such a gorgeous combination. Look at this dent. And I have never worn this. I have never worn this by itself. That dent is from layering. So I think what I discovered about Baccarat Rouge is that yes, it's magical. Yes, it's amazing. But what I love most about it is I love layering with it. It just, it just like changes and manipulates and elevates whatever you layer it with. So, and yeah, you just, you, you really can't go wrong. I would suggest try, go through your collection see what you can layer together and try to go for more like simple, clean smelling perfumes that have a few notes that are, um, not too complex. You know, I think that the beauty with layering is they can't be too complex. They have to be, um, relatively simple perfumes. And when you layer them together, that's when you get the magic. So that's it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this updated look at my perfume collection. And I hope that you will try my layering combination that I recommended, even though I still low-key kind of want to gatekeep it. But luckily, I don't know many of you guys in person, so <laughs> I don't think I have too much of a concern with running into somebody wearing this combination out and about. But uh, definitely a good discovery. So thank you guys for being here with me today, and I'll see you all very soon in my next one. Bye for now. Bye.